Okay, we are going to see who our February 2024 student of the month is. Everybody in this list attended a class in 2023, and each time you attended, you got entered into the drawing. So let's see who we get to honor and recognize. Mariana! Yay! Okay. Hello, everybody with Emerald Bodywork Education Community. I want to bring you February's Student of the Month. I have Mariana Salo with me today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join me, ma'am. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're so excited to honor you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I want to just, I want to jump in. So you have an interesting story as to what brought you to the world of massage. We've chatted mm -hmm. a little bit here and there, and I I think it's a, it's a story worth telling. So can you Thank just you. talk a little bit about what brought you to the field and why mm -hmm. massage? <laughs> um, so background is as a professional pianist. I'm a classically trained pianist. I have an undergrad and a master's in it. I still play um, actively. and uh, But I've dealt with overuse just from the sheer volume of practice hours, rehearsal hours, performing. And so I, um, I had to start pursuing uh, chiropractic care and soft tissue care in uh, literally a week before my uh, senior recital in undergrad, because um, I had locked up, it couldn't play, um, like had no power in my hands. I could not push the keys down, which is a little bit freaky and uh, just a little bit freaky <laughs> when you're about to play a degree recital. And so that was um, that was the start. Well, and also, too, I'd been introduced to the Alexander Technique in undergrad. and um, one of my family members always reminds me that something inside of me just turned on and like sparked um, in that class because it's also a body work modality. And so, um, gosh, so finished undergrad and took a, a couple years off before going for a master's. I really thought chiropractic school was where I was going to head after my master's program. Um, I thought chiropractors were so cool. And so I applied for the chiropractic program at Parker here in, in Dallas um, in less than six months of finishing my master's program in 2016. And the only thing that kept me from going for it was um, I don't have a, a strong science background because as a musician, it was like I am I, I am pushing all of the, the classes that are that can go the easiest route possible because I, I have to be at the piano like I have to practice. So no, not a strong science background and also cost was just prohibitive. Um, so the chiropractor that I was working with then, um, Chris Miller with Chirosport Specialists, um, he really, he still, he, he is still, I still count him as one of my mentors. Um, but we talked a lot about chiropractic work, about massage work. And he was the one that said to me, you know, you could do 90% of what you want to do with a massage license. And it just took me a while to believe him. Um, I've been seeing him since 2017 and I didn't start school until 2021. So uh, for massage and it just took me a while to believe him because I, I did. I really thought chiropractic was greater than massage. <laughs> so I'm not um, going to tell anybody you said that. Yeah, no, no. Safe with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it just finally hit a point for me that I, I, I needed a career change, but also too, I was desperate to have a hands-on skill set to help other people the way I had been helped. And so uh, I finally bit the bullet and got myself through massage school in 2021. And it's I, I'm from the first week of class, and it, I mean, I had so little knowledge of of all that massage can do. Um, because my, my focus has always been towards the therapeutic side. So I didn't realize that there were things like sugar scrubs and salt scrubs and what was like run the list. And so my first week in class, we were introing into things like that. And 
y'all can hate me, but please don't. I was just going, this is the stupidest thing ever, but I love it. And I just got to get through this portion of class to get to the actual stuff that I really want to learn, you know, like the, the Swedish techniques and the deep tissue techniques and all, all that sort of thing. So yes, that's, uh, that's how I got into massage. And so now is the bulk of your clientele musicians and pianists? It's a great question. Um, it is where I want to niche into, and that is a work in progress. Um, like anything, I have traction as a pianist in the area, but the word is still kind of getting out that I do massage. And so I've had a few music clients come to me. I actually have an incoming client this Friday that's a pretty significant client. Um, it's a faculty member for, at one of the, the big universities here in the DFW area on music faculty. Um, it was a referral to me. And so um, it's, it's slow... I'm hoping that that's going to be a real door opener um, where I will say though, musicians are where I would like to niche, but the therapeutic work overall is where I have really attracted clients and my repeat clients are the ones that are dealing with injury, chronic problems um, because it's my strong suit. That's what I love. So even if I'm still working on developing my hands-on skill set, and there's still techniques I want to improve that, the heart behind what you do as a therapist, like it really comes through um, because even within my first year as a therapist, when my hands-on skill set was still growing so much, because you're, you're figuring out what you're doing, you know, in that first year, you may have the training, but you're still really figuring out what you're doing, what you're feeling. And um, to have had clients that followed me from that period to now, because um, I'm out of the spas at this point, I'm just doing private clients. Um, I think that really speaks more to the intent and the heart behind it than, you know, like my own hands on hand, hands on abilities. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think, I think we underestimate the benefit to our clients. We underestimate our gifts and talents as therapists. And it's when those clients will follow you. And no matter where you go, they're bound and determined to be here every other Thursday at 10 o'clock or, you know, That's whatever. Right. And That's you're right. like, oh, all right. Okay. So I am bringing some value to these people. Okay. Yes. All right. I, I got this, you know, and then yes. you have another day where you're like, Man, why do even people come to me? You know, and then somebody oh, yes. will say, hey, I slept better last night or look what I can do. I couldn't do that yesterday. You know, That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, right. A validation from your clients is paramount. Yes. Yes. So it is, it's going to be a, a slower build into the music world. And, and again, that's just one of those things where hopefully as word gets out and as people begin to, you know, to, to know me and trust me and, and that's okay. Like I, I'm fine with that, you know? Exactly. It takes a little bit to build rapport, but once you begin to build yes. it, it's a snowball effect. Precisely. And and you can't buy advertising like you That's can right. with word of mouth that is that is established out of rapport. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. That's good. So you mentioned the Alexander technique. Do you practice the Alexander technique? I do not, but it's a great question because I had actually started the teacher training for that before I went for my master's. Um, um and it it is it is a it's a three year certification process and very time intensive and cost costly. And I knew, um, I forget sometimes that I'd started that, that process. Um, but I knew I really wanted a master's in piano performance and that I had, I, I couldn't keep waiting on that. That had to happen. So I don't practice it. Um, but it was, it was the initial spark. Yeah, in the body work field. It's a little bit of body work. It's a whole lot of like corrective exercises yes. and breath work, right? There's a lot of breath work. And I don't even know if I would call it corrective exercises. I, It's still rather hard for me to to really define where where it fits in a sense, because it's it's different than massage. It's different than PT. It's different than rehab work. 
Um, it's a very gentle way of helping the body learn how to move optimally and learn how you and your own movement patterns are using yourself in such a way that gets in your way. There you go. Very well said. I actually had a client bring the Alexander technique to me and uh, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And it is. And how could I ever find the time to learn this? You know, because <laughs> it's a... <laughs> It's a, it's another, yes. it's another animal. It really is. Yes. So, yeah. For you young therapists out there, if you're looking for a niche, there are people that are looking for this work. Yes. Um, it, is, it is pretty fascinating. It, it is. is. Yeah. So back to you, back to you. So when you do see your clients, um, is it, is it like a deep tissue? Is it an orthopedic? Um, do you do this elusive category that we call sports massage? Oh my like, gosh. <laughs> Amy and I have this conversation all the time. Good what description. Exactly. Sports massage. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> very I'm... good question. <laughs> very good question. And I feel like sometimes the same question could be asked of deep tissue. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. That's an age massage question. Right. <laughs> right. So, because people, people tend to think that deep tissue is just, oh, well, I've got to be in pain. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it, it you can do deep tissue, you know, through Swedish work as well. Oh, yeah. Because um, it refers to how, like, the the layers that you're working through and working on. But um, so, all right, hang on. I may have lost track of the question. Um, we'll start sure the question once more. We'll sure yes, it please. Your, your favorite modality. What do you just love to deliver? So this took me a while to understand, Christina. Um it really took me a while to understand, but the, the, I have come to realize that what I really enjoy doing is using Swedish techniques in a therapeutic way. So like petrissage, um, I've not delved deeply into myofascial, which I know is not Swedish. And I, I feel like that one would be of a, a particular benefit in some of the work that I do because I, I love the therapeutic aspect of things. Um, but yes, the best way I have, and I, and I learned this from, I got it from the therapist that works on me because his approach is very heavy on the, it's therapeutic, but it's, it's using the Swedish techniques. So, and that I've found that to resonate with people where, where they can wrap their brains around that because they understand what Swedish is. And then as soon as I say, and I use it in a therapeutic way, it, it, it resonates. I also really love active release technique. Um, I did, I did, I, I left cause I did a, a ton of CEs in the first two years of having my license. And as you know, I've just been in the field over just over two years, but one of the classes that I did was active release technique, lower extremity. And I did that. Oh my gosh. I think I was nine months into the field and that was a game changer for me. Um, because it's such a technical class and it's also such a clinical class because like chiros and PTs are taking those classes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and chiros or PTs are teaching those classes. There's, there are, there are a few massage therapists out there licensed to teach, but this tends to go down more that sports line. And, right. um, but it, I loved it. Like it, it was so deep into the anatomy of things, but also too just the the palpation skills and and the actual technique of how ART is reply, applied. Um, and that was a game changer for me. A, a, a game changer. So Swedish active release technique. Um, those are probably those are my two. Those are my tops. Those are your pets. Yes, <laughs> they are. And I got, okay. I have more work to do on the ART front. Like I eventually I want to be certified full body with ART. Um, so I'm, I'm always eyeballing those classes. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I've been exposed to a lot of ART and, um, it is, is definitely an effective, uh, therapy. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to see more of it in the massage community than what we have. Yes. So keep going girls. Yes. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you and I had a little conversation before our interview, and I'm going to ask you to hit replay on that because okay. this was great. I asked <laughs> you, um, what would be your advice for students, people that are preparing for the implex or brand new baby therapist, 
So can you kind of give a little advice, Salash, a little bit of your own experience? Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> so, and as, as a little bit of history for, for those of you that are listening, part of our conversation included, I had never set foot into a spa until after I had earned, well, I had sat for my Mblex. So license hadn't cleared, but I had never set foot into a spa. So I had no clue what I was walking into when I went in for my first interview. Um, much, you know, much less what the spa world was going to be like. So I, um, and y'all may be better at this than I am. <laughs> I was kind of just looking at the end goal and didn't really look at like the in-between steps of my end goal is to work therapeutically. So what is that going to translate into? And um, for me, it translated to ending up in the spas, which um, I would quite frankly, I was quite miserable on the front end of it and almost uh, left the field within a month. It was just because I had a colleague that stepped in and took me under his wing and coached me that kept me in because um, he did. He said, you got to earn your stripes. And he spoke truth. Um, being in the spa world and just having the volume of clients that I had, like it, it builds your hand on hands on skill sets so fast. So I would say explore all the different avenues that you as a massage therapist uh, could potentially work. Um, Cause it's not just limited to spas. Some like Christina said, she started in a chiropractic clinic. That was my dream job was to end up in a chiropractic clinic. Um, at least that's what I thought it was. Um, and I did get an opportunity to do that. And yes, the clientele, it was a whole different ball game because you get a lot more of the therapeutic work. And that's what I, I love doing. I love doing that kind of work. But spas are out there. There's more luxury end when you get into like the hotels. I haven't done that. Um, not interested in it. And that's okay. Um, there's the sports work as well. So I would do your homework, not even just on, okay, what are the classes available to me now, but also what are the working options out there? Because all of them are going to be different and you're going to pick up different things. You're going to get exposure to different people, different clientele. Um, what else would I say? Um, go get work from other therapists in the field um, because all of us practice differently. And you will take something away from every therapist that you work with. Um, I'm not the greatest at following that advice because I'm usually really seeking therapeutic work. And so I am at personally am very picky with who I go to um, just because I'm, I'm, I, I do, I still deal with some overuse injuries. And so I, I tend to need very specific work. And um, so I'm, I'm picky. <laughs> um, what else has been really helpful to me as far as, I would say go try different classes as well. Step outside of your box, even if you think you're going to to not enjoy the class. And Christina, you know, like I I did prenatal with y'all. And the only reason I did that was because I was at a chiro clinic and needed it. But again, you're going to learn pieces there um, of information that you can apply to other clients, whether or not you actually specialize in that. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That's all really Thank great you. stuff. Thank and you. that's, that's something that we were talking about. Like when I have a student in class, um, I, I'm always listening to what you guys are saying and I'm looking at your skills and I'm looking at the pace that you work and your body mechanics and how you set your table and the conversations mm -hmm. you choose to have. And then I'm thinking, where would they fit? You know, I've seen so many therapists give up on their career. Yeah. Great therapist. Yes. Because they hadn't found where they belonged in the field. Yes. You know, yes. if you get burnout and you're like, eh, massage isn't for me, but you're, but you're there for a reason. Yes. You need to dig deeper and you need to find where you belong because there's yes. a place for every kind of therapist. Yes. There and there's already not enough of us to go around. So please yes. don't leave the field. Find your niche. <laughs> yes. And that, that can be a very that can be a very hard road, uh, a very difficult road. And, um, yeah, I, I, as I said, I would, I would have been out of the field within a month, um, just cause I hadn't understood what it was going to take to get where I needed to go. Um, I would also say too, 
don't be afraid if you need to have, and I talked about this with one of my mentors, Strat Polson, who y'all know, cause he, oh, he yeah. taught. Shout out to Strat. <laughs> oh yeah. He's the best. Um, but he, he coached me through school and we talked, we've, I mean, we've, we've still talked about this, that it's okay to have a full-time job in another field. I've had to figure this out as a, as a professional musician too. It's okay to have a full-time job and have massage be your passion and go at it that way, you know, where it doesn't have to be your entire support system. But if it's something that you love and are, and feel called to do, then pay attention to that. Um, because as Christina was saying, there's a place for you and there are going to be people that need you and benefit from you and are grateful for you because you're going to be able to do things for someone that I can't do for someone. And, um, just by virtue of who you are as a person and what your interests are in the field. So, um, yeah, I would, I would say, don't be afraid, you know, to have massage be a side thing. If it needs to be, that's okay. Even if it's just for a season that it's a side thing. Very nice. Very nice. I am going to tell you, thank you for your time today. This was a wonderful interview. Uh, these interviews always take a I never know where we're going to go with the topic, but today was needed. And um, I'm so glad. Yeah. Great conversation. Thank you, Mariana. And thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. We're going to keep featuring little things from you throughout the month. So you thank guys you so much. dive into Mariana's story and um, yeah, let's get to, let's get to know each other a little bit better. One, one student of a month at a time. <laughs> it's amazing. So. Love what, love what y'all are doing. It's so impressive to watch and I just saw that Amy is going to be doing a cancer's journey down in Austin, which I was like, yes, a legit way to go. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take the thank you. I'll, I'll take the congratulations for Amy. I get to tag along, but Love getting it. to teach at our mentor school is like, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty exciting thing. So it's hey, huge. thanks for the shout out. Anybody that wants to just make a quick little road trip to Austin, <laughs> join us. Or we're also doing a cancer's journey in March at our teaching space. So thanks for the plug. Absolutely. <laughs> say goodbye to the community and thanks for joining us, everybody.